by uh, one directive which you gave. Do what is best for the people. In 2018, President Duterte gave NCR a staggering 897 billion pesos or 23.8% of the budget. Sinunod niya pala yung mga other imperial presidents. Sinentralize niya rin sa NCR ang pondo. So is he really serious? Kami sa Visayas, 9.9% kami ng 2016. Nung under Duterte, bumaba pa kami. 9.7% ang aming share sa total budget. Ano yung kampanya mo na i-diffuse ang pondo sa mga probinsya? Joke yun. And you're not serious if you're looking at his budget. He wasn't even serious as to his main campaign pitch. This is about dictatorship. Yan ang essence ng cha-cha na to. Lahat ng cha-cha na, na nilarga nila dati sa simula, ang lakas-lakas niyan. Grabe ang suporta ng Kongreso, grabe ang suporta ng lahat ng LGUs. Sa gitna ng cha-cha campaign nila, nawiwindang sila. Bakit? Because by that time, nalaman ng taong bayan ang laman ng cha-cha nila. At nalaman ng taong bayan, hindi pala ito about dati, the same people, many of the same people promoting federalism. A few years ago, they were going around saying the salvation of the country is a shift to parliamentary system. But in the end, sabi ng tao, it's not about parliamentary system, it's not about federalism. This is about self-serving interest of politicians. That is why Chacha never prospered. Yeah. I think this is a very good step forward for the country because it creates more accountability on the part of the people running. They will not only be accountable to the people directly, but they will also be accountable to their political parties, that they will deliver on the commitments of their respective political parties. And I think that uh, double accountability uh, will cause our politicians to be more responsible and to be more effective and efficient in, uh, in doing their tasks. So I think this is a great step forward for the country, especially the, this, the, the political uh, dynasty pro uh, provisions, which restricts and uh, prohibits political dynasty, and also, of course, the strengthening of our political parties. Um, it will really help a lot. It will cut a lot of our current problems now, and uh, especially the personality-based politics that we experience. Um, it will really, really help improve uh, our country in that respect. The first election under the new constitution is 2022. Question. What if this constitution is ratified in 2018, when is the first election? 2022. What happens to the 2019 elections? Cancel. Because the Constitution says 2022, yung first election. Kaya Noel is ingrained in the Constitution. Kaya maraming politiko ang gustong ratsyadahin at i-railroad ang tsatsyang ito in 2018 or at any time before the 2019 elections para makancel ang 2019 elections. This is not about federalism. This is about term extension. This is about cancellation of elections. You know, we've been in this system for several decades now. And paulit-ulit tayong nagre-reklamo, bakit ganito pa rin yung ating bansa? Bakit ganito pa rin yung mga problema ng ating politika? Pero hindi natin nakikita o nare-realize na yung problema, a big part of it is with the system eh. The system encourages and breeds patronage politics in the country. The current system encourages and breeds political dynasties. So I think with these um, provisions in our proposed draft constitution, we can find real tangible solutions to these problems and concerns. And a big, a big plus in, in, in this provision is this. It will encourage citizens like you, citizens like me, citizens like Wilson, like Prof. Casiple, to participate in our processes, to participate in our elections, to participate in our governance. Ngayon, di natin kaya yun eh. Pero eventually, our people will be more empowered because we are giving them the platform, we are giving them the capacity 
to participate and make a difference in the country. So it will not only be in the hands of a few elites, political elites, it will be distributed in the hands of a greater number of people who are capable, who are willing, who are passionate about serving the country. I, I will first, I will uh, argue why that is the case, that a proposed uh, federalism structure followed by its uh, Constitution will in fact lead to a refeudalization of our polity. In other words, a worsening of a long problem that we have not yet successfully addressed. And daming pwedeng gawin, in other words, under the existing Constitution, without being drawn, without falling into the false promises of a better system, under a federal structure of which we have very little, uh, of which we have no experience whatsoever and very little understanding. Because federal systems, there is no single model of a federal system that we can adapt, no? That's another problem. Kasi, <laughs> ang, ang isang uh, totoo sa federalism system, walang ni isang federalism model. Yes. 29 countries yung uh, kinoconsider na federal in the world. Not yes. one of them yes. is similar to the others. Ah. Kaya nga, pag magsabi tayo ngayon, ang Philippine model, yung yes. bayanihan model, ano, yes. it's unique in the world. Yes. Kasi walang ganyan. May mga kinuha ka from other countries, mga specific features, pero not really in the sense na sabihin mong model. Kasi ang model may major similarities yan. Ano, may template ka. Yes. Ang pwede ko lang masabi siguro dyan, there are two, two kinds of sorry na sinasabi ng mga political scientists na type of federalism. Yung coming together at yung holding together. Instituting political reforms, there are basically three areas no, of reform, uh, political reforms that can be addressed. First, yung uh, relationship between the central government and the subnational units of government, the local government units in short. No? And the uh, classic uh, relationship, of course, is between the so-called unitary and federal systems, but there are also internal variations in each of these. So it's a very complicated, uh, com complicated uh, relationship. No? You can have a unitary system, for instance, which is very decentralized in practice, but you can also have a federal system which is centralized in practice. Strengthen the regional level. Uh, at hindi totoo yan, ha? you're adding another layer of bureaucracy. Magkaibang gobyerno yan eh. Uh, bigyan ko rin kayo ng isang concrete example na kaibahan ng unitary at saka ganyan. Ano? Kung ang teacher nag-retire, Saan niya makukuha yung benefit? Who approves the benefits? Depet. Sa Maynila, not depet sa probinsya. Uh, Oo oh, nga. In a situation na meron ng uh, regional education, na uh, ano, malamang, nandun na yun sa level ng region. Hindi na kailangan pumunta. So yung bureaucracy actually, na-cut down mo. Kasi dyan ka na lang sa regional uh, center pupunta. Maraming mga usapin actually, ay doon na ma-resolve sa regional level. Okay, it's not uh, adding another layer of bureaucracy. Yung usapin ng additional bureaucracy only pertains kung midadaanan ka pa before the ultimate decision is made. Nagdagdag ka ng another layer. In this case, federalism does not do that. Kasi, pati yung power to decide, binaba mo eh. Hindi, wala na pakialam yung federal sa maraming decision. So we have a long history of local officials directly elected by the people. Pangalawa, are there strong bosses? Ito yung mga warlo local warlords, very powerful uh, political families who can defy central agencies of government. No, We've had a long history of this, as you know. Meron bang ganyang tayong experience at the local level? No? Strong bosses who are able to combine both economic and coercive power. Coercive meaning they can control the police, even the military, 
they, they have enormous resources, guns and goons, no? Again, we know that in many local areas, that has been the experience in the Philippines. If you're talking elitist politics, then you're actually talking of something that is not democratic. Even if you call it elite democracy, the trappings is in the democracy, the substance is in the elite. So, yan po yung problema actually ngayon. My own opinion there is that for the first time, we have a president who may be related by blood or by political expediency to the elite, but is not actually part of the elite, or at the least, is not considered by the elite as one of their own. There is somebody who came from a very far uh, city in the south, Na bigla naging presidente, out of the blue. Ano? Ang probinsyano. Totoong probinsyano. Totoong probinsyano. Na naghangad na mawala yung Imperial Manila. Or actually, the role of the elite. Yes. So there is only two possible reactions of the elite. Yes. One, and I think it's already happening, they're trying to get him out even before the end of his term. Yung sinacharge na mawawa ni ng uh, administration na uh, destabilization. Ano? The other is co-optation. 